All right, we are at Lookout Mountain Park. This is supposed to be around here where Buffalo Bill's grave and museum is, but we are going to check out the mountains first. It is very cold and slippery on the ice, so try not to fall. I already fell once. Let's go see it. So right next door to where we were is the Buffalo Bill Museum and grave site. Let's hope we don't trip and fall on the way to it. All right, that's some information Obie. on Buffalo Bill. And we found where his grave is. If you take a pine cone, you may keep a tree from growing. So don't take the pine cones here. This is so pretty. Attention, stay off the buffalo. <laughs> Can't wait to get some hot chocolate soon. <laughs> How are you doing, Mom? <laughs> and we found it. He was born 1846, lived till 1970, 17. And then his wife, 1844 to 1921. And I guess that's their son down there and lots of coins. Here we go, we were just asking this, why do people throw money on the grave? So he used to be on, they put Indian head nickels on the grave to honor Buffalo Bill. Interesting. And this is just an overhead view of the gift shop and museum down there from where the grave is. You just take this little pathway, a steep incline, and you made it there. It is a really nice day out, but we're all just kind of freezing because we're used to 80 degrees all the time. So there's tons of concrete to make sure that nobody steals his body. Kind of weird why someone would want a body, I don't know. <laughs> now we're going in to the gift shop. He welcomes you as soon as you come in. We've got some cute go. Christmas ornaments here. Lots of Colorado specific ones. I like those leaves. I love the dream catchers. I'm really liking all of the different kinds of souvenirs and stuff that they sell in the gift shop. Of course, lots of books here. But then I was just over here and they had like thermometers and key holders. <laughs> Lots of handcrafted souvenirs to bring home. They've got this whole wall of postcards here. I really like the look of some of them. Very vintage look. Look how cool. Looks like a vintage shooting machine. It says, please shoot slowly. <laughs> I wonder how old this is. I got this whole tire right next to it. So right next door to the gift shop is the Buffalo Bill Museum. It's only $5 each person, and we are gonna go inside and learn more about this interesting fella named Cody, but otherwise known as Buffalo Bill. Let's go. Got some information here on the Denver mountains throughout the years, and what is to come in the future for the parks. More than 2 million people visit the mountains annually, including 68% of Denver residents. That's interesting. I wonder if my friends over at Ears Etc, Jennifer and Eddie and Jocelyn and Mac over at Disney Gratitude, I wonder if they have been here because I know they are in Colorado as well. Got a quote here from Annie Oakley saying that he was the staunchest friend Interesting. I want to learn more about how he advocated equal rights for women. Good job, Buffalo Bill. This is pretty big. This caught my eye as soon as we came in. This is a lamp. Interesting. This buffalo is big. Oh, got lots of merchandise, I'm assuming all geared towards Buffalo Bill. He used to have his own tortilla chips and hot sauce and sarsaparilla. Oh, I love this. Giddy 
<laughs> that Colorado horse life. <laughs> There's something here that says, did Buffalo Bill visit your town? And apparently he did. He came to Orlando October 22nd, 1912. This is an interesting display of all the different types of bullets here. It's a huge display. Shells, primers. Interesting. And there's Annie Oakley. She performed with Buffalo Bill's Wild West for 16 years, from 1885 to 1901. Since many female visitors were unaccustomed to gunfire, the petite and ladylike Annie would open the show, setting their minds at ease. One of her most popular tricks featured the use of a mirror to aim her rifle, which was pointed backwards over her shoulder at a target located behind her. And these are just some different rifles that they use throughout the 1800s. And some bows and arrows. Just reading up on the history with Native Americans, which a lot of this verbiage says Indians, um, but it says that they had a very complex relationship. Um, they were enemies at first and then became a friend because he offered them employment opportunities and equal pay within at a show and he spoke out on behalf of their rights and helped them preserve their culture when u.s policy aimed to destroy it buffalo bill sound sounded like a pretty nice guy they have tons of artifacts here like these for example from the lakota performers beaded ties purses when Buffalo Bill died, nearly 20,000 people came to Lookout Mountain for the burial. The crowd included family, friends, former Wild West cast members, veterans, groups, and thousands of fans. Mrs. Cody requested an open cast it so that everyone could take one last look at Buffalo Bill. Here we go. This is what I was looking for. So he met Susan B. Anthony while in Chicago. He advocated giving women the vote in, in later interviews stated that women should also be given equal rights and equal pay. Something we're still fighting for. Very cool. And there's tons more artifacts here. That is an ore from one of Buffalo Bill's gold mines in Arizona. And the gun-shaped bit. And a sword. Very cool. Right next to where the museum is, is a great lookout point. You can apparently see four states from here. Wow, crazy high up. <laughs> So we have come to Golden, Colorado, which is very close to where we just were at for the Buffalo Bill Museum. They have the Coors Golden Brewery, a lot of Coors stuff, but I don't really like Coors. Um, and then there's this awesome sign with Santa and his reindeer, see if I can get a better look at it. And we're just kind of browsing the shops. We had lunch at the uh, Miner's Saloon, which was pretty good, but I didn't film it. So trying to enjoy the vacation as well as vlog when I can. Let's see if there's anything to look at down here. Lots of cute Christmas lights decorating everything. Crossing the street to go to this Golden Goods Toys, Candy, and Souvenirs. Wonder if they have anything Colorado specific. Let's go check it out. They've got tons of Lego options. Looking at all those Harry Potter ones up there. And some Star Wars ones down here. And a lot of the candy that you would expect when you go to a candy store. They have some Mexican ice cream, a lot of Colorado specific shirts and things like that. And the candy. We saw this cute ice cream shop, so we're just on the sweet train. It's called Golden Sweets. And they've got candy here too, but the main draw is the ice cream and different chocolate goods here. Might have to get something. How come vacation always makes you want to eat like 
all the sweet things, at least for me. This is some wall art in our parking garage for our hotel, and it has some highlights around the city. This is obviously where we're staying. There's the Denver Aquarium, it's right next to here. Elitch Gardens, which I saw was closed, but I saw lit up Ferris wheel, so I don't even know. Um, Coors Field, Union Station, the museum, Pepsi Center. Yeah, there's a lot to do here. Excited to do some more tomorrow. Good morning, it's day two. And we are going to do some really exciting things today. I can't wait to show you. We are here at the Stanley Hotel and man, was it a bitch to get here. <laughs> We're not used to driving in the snow, but this was worth a visit. This is the hotel that was the inspiration for the Overlook in The Shining. Stephen King actually wrote the novel here, but the movie was not filmed here. The miniseries was though. They've got a really cute car outside. And this is the entrance to the Stanley. And this is the main, well, not the main lobby. I think there's another main lobby, but they've got it decorated for Christmas. You guys can see it is coming down outside. It looks beautiful, but not fun to drive in. It looks like this room is for meetings very nice in here. It's a beautiful desk here. And I am going up the steps real quick just to see. It's so pretty. There's very pretty mirrors here too. Looks like they do chores here as well. Oh, it smells so good. They do do chores here. And that is probably from the mini series that I read up on. I haven't watched the mini series. Ooh, here we go. And here is some art of the Shining movie. So this is the dollhouse that was actually on the mini series. I got some pictures here from the mini series that was on ABC. Everyone knows that Stephen King did not like the movie version of his book, so he produced and made a mini series that was on from April 27th to May 1st, 1997. I guess I need to watch that <laughs> and see his version. And then Dumb and Dumber came here. We got all their signatures here. Very cool. And this hotel is on the uh, historic, I don't know, site. It's definitely on the registry. <laughs> That's what I was looking for, the registry. The Stanley Ice Box. It's really cool here. All the, uh, all the memorabilia from the hotel. That's what it looked like here in the town. Just want to give you guys a quick view of this elevator. It is so cool. And we have made it onto the floor where the main lobby is. They've got this awesome car here. Let's see if information about this car. It's a 1910 Stanley Steamer model. It used to be $800. I just, they've got a beautiful Christmas tree in here. It's absolutely gorgeous. And there is the main check-in. Let's go see this gift shop. I found some of the shining stuff. They got the classic carpet. And this is the number, the room number that Stephen King stayed in to write the shining. Very cool. And I just wanted to see the billiard rooms, what those look like. Very cool. I'm 
sure they have several events and weddings and things like that here. And then, this is the music room. It's gorgeous. Let's see what it says. It was the ladies' parlor. So the elevator that I showed you earlier is from 1909 when the hotel opened. It's called the Otis Elevator. Maximum of six people. Very cool. It looks like they did add a hedge maze in 2015. Ah, so cool. And then this is the front just so I can show you guys what it looks like. It's very big. Very, very big. This is a little view of the hedge maze. Looks even creepier with the snow. So that first building that we were in was where they have events as well. But we just went through the main lobby. And see, it's a little scary. A little accident as we were coming in. Somebody slid into another car. We're just not used to driving in this. But it was beautiful to visit. And that was our first two days of adventuring. We went to the Buffalo Bill Museum and Grave, and we drove through the Rocky Mountains. We wanted to spend more time there, but it was snowing so bad that there was no way that we were gonna make it up to the park like it was snowed in the entrance. Um, so we drove through it, which was really nice. And then we went to the Stanley Hotel, which was the inspiration for the uh, Overlook Hotel from The Shining. Please leave a comment down below on what you liked the most. If you've been to any of these areas, let me know. And uh, yeah, see you next time on Lauren's Travels. Gonna have a little bit more Denver for you.